Have you ever been working on a project where you suddenly realized that you actually needed to have multiple timelines open at the same time inside DaVinci Resolve? Well, that's exactly what happened to one of my students. They were working on a project where they needed to reference multiple timelines all at the same time, but couldn't work out how to do it inside the DaVinci Resolve 18.5 interface. Now, it's actually really straightforward and I was really glad to be able to show them how to do it and it made a massive difference to their editing workflow because it sped them up absolutely no end. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys exactly how you can do it too. So jumping into DaVinci Resolve 18, we can take a look at how we can enable the stacked multiple timelines feature. Now to do that, we need to just understand the context of what we're looking at. So what I've done here, I've just refreshed my UI to the factory default settings. So you can come up here and go workspace, factory UI layout or reset UI layout, just to ensure that we're looking at the same thing. And again, we've got a simple timeline here that I've been working on. It's just an interview of this lady talking. And all I've done is I've brought up some of the different parts of her conversation to different audio tracks and video tracks to essentially elevate the level of priority for these pieces. And some of these will make the edit, whereas some of the ones on video track one probably won't make the edit. But now that I've got these all nicely organized and sorted, I want to put them onto my main narrative timeline and start building that timeline from there. But how do I do that? I've only got one timeline showing up here and there doesn't look to be any other way of opening up another timeline easily. Well, let's come up here to the top of the program viewer and you can see here that we've got in red, interview select. That is the current timeline that we are viewing in the program window here. And you can see that that's the case because when I move my playhead back and forth, that updates to show us what we're looking at. So what I want to do here is use this little drop down arrow, click that and you can see we've got some other potential timelines that we could open. So Precious Adams V1 is actually our narrative timeline. So if I click that, you can see we open up a brand new timeline that I've created already that is now empty, ready for us to put some clips into. However, we have a small problem because I haven't got another timeline to copy from. I have to get all the way back up here, open up my interview selects timeline, find the little piece that I want to copy. So let's use this little first piece, Command, Control C, depending on which you're on, a Mac or a PC, then come back over here, Precious Adams and paste. There we go. So I've got to do that again. Interview selects, find the next one I want to copy, Command or Control C, come back up here, go back to my narrative, select, paste. And that's all taking rather a little bit too long. It's not too bad, but you know, we can definitely be faster. Must go faster. So I'm just going to undo to go back a couple of stages. There we go. And we're back in our interview selects timeline. So what I'm going to do now is actually open up a little feature that you may not know is here, but if you come over to this icon, which is just on the far left of the toolbar, and it's called the timeline view options. If we click that, we have a little dialog that pops up. So you'll notice that along the top row, we've got two that are turned on because they're in white. And this one here that is not in white, it's actually grayed out. And it's called stack timelines. So let's turn this one on. And what actually immediately happens isn't what I would call stacked timelines necessarily. I would call this tabbed timelines because what you can see is we've got a little tab bar that's now opened showing us our active timeline. And indeed we can add another one by simply clicking this and then creating another tab and selecting another timeline. So in this case, we want these two ones open. You'll notice that the one that's in red is the one that's currently active in the program viewer. So if I come back to my interview selects, I can grab that first clip again, copy and then paste. And that is a whole lot faster than what we did just before, but it still could be quicker. And it's still not what we're talking about. We want both timelines open at the same time. So how do we do that? Let's just take a really quick pause from talking about multiple stack timelines in DaVinci Resolve to just quickly say thank you very much indeed, guys. We recently passed 10,000 subscribers on the channel and then more subsequently, we just recently passed 12,000 subscribers. So I'm just amazed, I'm delighted to see the channel grow and it means that hopefully I'm putting out good information that you guys really enjoy and are resonating with and that just you know is really important to me. So thank you firstly for helping the channel get there. I really do appreciate it. Equally, one of the things I love to do is give back with a bit of value wherever I can and if you haven't already, do check out the description in all of the videos that I've put out because they normally have nice, interesting bits of information or useful downloads or free resources, uh, some of which are affiliate links, so just to be clear about that. And uh, again, it doesn't cost you anything, but it just helps support the channel even further and it means I can keep doing more videos just like this. So I really appreciate it. Do check out the description below. We're also gonna be doing some giveaways very soon because we now are having more and more opportunities to do things like this. So if you want to be considered for any of that sort of cool, useful information or 
will be ever eligible for giveaways, then you just need to make sure you've registered your details below, join our emailing list, and then I can let you know about those as soon as they become available. All right, thanks very much indeed guys, let's jump back onto the video. Well, this is where the stack timeline part comes in. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna undo that, and I'm gonna close this timeline for now. This tab bar that's now opened has given us another little icon that again, doesn't normally appear. And it's this one right over here on the far right. You can see it's got a little window with a plus symbol next to it. So this means we're gonna add a new timeline. And when I click it, we get just that, stacked timelines in the edit page. So you can see here, we've got two timeline areas open. This lower one is waiting for us to tell it which timeline we'd like to use in there. So again, we come to the little tab bar that's just on the top of that timeline, and we're gonna choose the narrative timeline that I was talking about before. And then we might want to do some rejigging of the interface at this point, and that's absolutely okay. We can, we can actually reposition just by finding the boundary points between the different timeline and view areas. And we can also come back to the timeline view options. If we click this one to make it active, timeline view options, we'll just change the track height for the video here and maybe the audio as well, just to make it a little bit easier to see. Cool, I'm gonna grab that first clip, copy, paste. Grab the next one, copy, paste. Grab the next one, copy, paste. Pretty good, pretty quick, and I'm sure you'll agree that is a lot faster than the way we were doing it before. Now, another thing to know is that we can also move things by simply dragging them. So if I simply get the next one that I want to move over, which is this one, and I simply drag this over, I can drag it straight on and put it wherever I would like. So in this case, I'm gonna put it right here, bump it up against the other one, making sure snapping's turned on, let go, and there we go. Notice that it remains in this top timeline when I drag it or when I copy it. Yeah, so if I bring the next one down, drag along, paste it in, thank you very much. Very, very quick, and it just enables us to very quickly also switch between them. Bear in mind, whichever one is red and active will be the one that shows up here in the program monitor. So again, switching between the two, very quick to do, just like that. Definitely well worth adding this technique to your workflow. This also is known as pancake editing, by the way, if anyone's interested. Pancake editing because we can layer up the different levels of timelines. Pancake, 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 pancake. So of course, another thing we can do, if you notice that these icons here have changed, we can now close the timeline if we want to, so we can actually close this timeline, or we can add another one. There we go, so we've now got three timelines, and do you know what, we can keep going. If we really wanted to, we could have as many timelines as we possibly wanted open all at the same time. But we don't need to do that in this case, we're gonna close some, so let's close this one, let's close this one, and actually what we'll do in this case is we'll close the other one as well. There we go, and in fact, you might want to be wondering, well, hang on a moment, Alex, let me open that one back up, and let me say we're in this situation, but I want them the other way around. I want to actually go from bottom to top rather than top to bottom, for example. And that's absolutely fine. You can switch them around. You can also have multiple individual timelines open in each sort of timeline section, if you will. So I can turn this one on and ask it to put the B-roll in there. So I've now got interview select and B-roll available in the top because maybe these are two uh, different timelines that you might want to pull from to bring down into your main narrative. Equally, if I wanted to, I could close this B-roll one down here and I could open it down here because what you'll notice is that when I open the little drop down, we've got only two available to us to be opened at this point and the other two are grayed out. And that's because they are already open in some form or another anyway. So if I put the B-roll down here, for example, I could then also close or open Precious up here. In fact, close it here, sorry, big pardon, see, because I can't do it in, I gotta open it here. And I can close that one and then open this one here. So there we go. So once you've got that all sorted, and you've got that whichever already you wanted to, you can now start dragging the other way. So if you wanted to, we could start taking footage from here, dragging it up to this one, letting go, and so on and so forth. And it's very easy and quick to do indeed. Equally, if you wanted to, you can do this using the in and out commands as well. So pressing in in this keyboard, going to the end of the clip, jumping back one frame, pressing the O for the out key. And then now I've got those, I can simply go copy, and I can bring them up here, and I can paste it again. And for those of you out there lucky enough to have two monitors available to you, this actually works really well in a two monitor setup. Because what we can actually do now is come up here to our menu under workspace. We're gonna come up here to dual screen. We're gonna turn dual screen on. And you can see now how my interface splits itself over the two different windows. This is a great way of working incidentally in DaVinci Resolve. So if you don't have a second monitor, try and find yourself one because it does make the world a whole lot easier because it just means that all of the important controls can be wherever you need them. And then what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna to come to workspace and I'm gonna turn on, under the dual screen option, the full screen timeline. So once I do that, I've now got two lovely big timeline areas that I can work in. If I just change up using my shift and rolling my scroll wheel, I can quickly change the heights of these tracks. 
There we go. So I can now very easily work inside my two timelines very nicely. My view is all shift over to my other monitor and I can see here I'm now working in this primary narrative timeline up here. And if I want to, I can jump down here, grab one of my next selects from my selects timeline, make sure it's the right one, drag it up here, let it go on there. And now I'm back to editing this top one again. And again, when I'm all finished, I'm done, I can close this selects timeline area down, close it down. I can even go up here and shut my tab timelines off if I don't want to. And I'm now back to editing my full piece. So there we go. Opening up multiple stack timelines in the DaVinci Resolve interface is actually really easy and super fast to do, and it will help make you a more efficient and effective video editor, improving that workflow, making you fast, helping you get your projects out the door. I hope you've taken something away of value from the video and that you've learned something. If you have, please take a moment, hit the thumbs up button for me, let me know that you enjoyed the video, and also it lets everybody else know that this was a video that was well worth watching. Equally, a lot of you haven't subscribed to the channel already, so if you have been back and forth to the channel, a few times take a moment now if you haven't already hit that subscription button it really helps to support me in the channel enabling me to do more content about DaVinci Resolve just like this to help you get the best from it equally the notification bell will ensure that you don't miss another video as soon as we upload one but until we do happy editing and I'll see you next time